Yes, it is cold enough to see my own breath in the garage. It is absolutely freezing in here, but I have a solution. This is one of those little gadgets that you stick your GoPro in and it lets you take photographs half in and half out of the water, in theory. This is my second one. I bought one at the beginning of this year. I thought everyone's doing surfing and then coral underneath. Who wants to see surf and coral? I also didn't have access to surfing or coral. So, I um, let's build that later. I went canoeing with it. It turns out the Thames is rather brown. I then took it down to the coast in Wales. The problem with Wales is that it is about the same temperature as this garage. I went as far as a rock pool and took one photograph. I then spent the rest of the time forcing my children into the sub-zero water so that I could chase them around with the drone. That was far more exciting. They all got hypothermia. This thing, your GoPro goes in a little box on the back, you hold onto it, you swim around, you stick it. I, do you know what? I'm making this up as I go. I was determined at the beginning of the year to get some photographs with one of these and it is now the 2nd of December, so I have no other option than leaving the country, flying to another country, and um, I, there are other options, aren't there? I could just, I could just go without and, and do it next year, but um, um, I, can, I can see my own breath. on a motorbike. I took a backpack that was entirely full of camera stuff. I had two GoPro sessions, two regular GoPros, a drone, a point and shoot, a DSLR. Come out here, the only thing in my suitcase is a pair of flippers, a mask and a couple of shorts and I decided to travel light. I don't know why. All I bought was the GoPro Max and my Hero 7 Black. That was it. Thinking it would be ample, it turns out it's not. Because before I set off, I noticed I was missing the little side door on the 7, replaced it. I went for the cheap one. Cheap can be good at times, but on a part that's keeping the water out of your expensive camera, maybe not. I've used this, I got some quite good footage, and then went to use it again yesterday afternoon. The battery oddly looked like it was covered in salt. I'm no um, marine biologist, but I'm gonna guess has come from the ocean. Now, I dried it out with a hairdryer and I put a new battery in it and I have a degree of functionality. The screen doesn't work. Sometimes the power button will work, the shooting button works, no option to change the settings. I'd happily have gone and bought a GoPro Hero 8, uh, but in Egypt it seems that the Hero 4 is still state of the art in the shops. I also thought maybe the Max would be of use the Max is of no use underwater. It's amazing for doing cool, swirling shots, but it is useless underwater. Took it down to the beach yesterday. The two lenses can't join themselves together, so you get this weird line between front and back. And even if you were just looking forward, so using the hero mode, pointless because the curved lens on the Max means it is blurry. So do not buy a GoPro Max to take it underwater. So here's the plan today. Uh, how does this work? Incredibly simple. Your GoPro goes in the back of the dome, you shut the dome up, and you attach a handle. Do you want to go for a swim? Okay, got the dome, got the subject. Cold? testing in the ocean. For reasons unknown, when you start filming, it records for about 10 seconds and then stops. Photos do work okay, but when you push go to take the photograph, it takes seven or eight seconds to take it 
store it and be ready to take another. So given that the above water, underwater type shot requires really good timing to come out effective, that didn't work at all. I came back with about 15 photographs, teasingly good. There was a, there was a hint that this is going to be a cool way of taking a photo, but it just wasn't enough of them to have captured the perfect shot. Discovered that the time lapse, luckily, was set on a photograph every half second. Luckily, because I can't change the settings. That half second interval, though, meant that I could go back and take, well, basically, thousands of photographs. I'm going to download them now had to come back because my dome was starting to fill up with water. Um, I'm not having an awful lot of luck here. back however given how long it takes Jen to get into the cold water there is still a possibility that I'll be in first I'm gonna say 50 50 I knew it I suppose she's in up to her knees cover this thing in Vaseline as well because of that stupid little cheap door there is Vaseline everywhere now the MacBook won't read my fingerprint because it's covered in Vaseline okay let's have a look I haven't gone through all of them um, and there are there are some minor issues this photograph needs some work doing on the color these raindrops on the glass need to be edited out but this is exactly what I was looking for. We've got the palm trees, we've got the coral. Okay, let's flick through. Okay, the good news is they work and there's actually some in there that might be good enough. But I think we can do a tiny bit better. We're gonna, um, we'll go back after lunch. That's the new plan. But this is now very exciting. We're back again and this could be the last day of trying for this photo. Uh, yesterday's photo was almost good enough but I have a gut feel that there is better to be had. Unfortunately the dome is leaking again uh, so it needed drying out before we came. Drying it out is putting scratches galore on the inside of it because it's made from the cheapest plastic in the world. We know exactly what the plan is. Uh, the plan is to do the same as we've been doing and just hope we get the lucky shot. It would be so much easier if we could use burst mode and take 30 shots in a second. But we can't. We're stuck on the half second time lapse. I saw online that the GoPro 8 has raw options for burst mode and time lapse. So just to rub uh, sea salt in the wound of not having it available to me uh, had I had it, it would have been even cooler than I thought it would have been. So, buying it as soon as I get home and booking another holiday. We're going we're gonna to come back with the GoPro 8.
going to bury the diamond sea. Obviously not plastic. Video update is that the dome is toast. In fact, it's so toast it's going in the bin immediately. What's a cookie? So we have now we're done with doming, dome filming. The GoPro is leaking when taken out of the dome. That was our last shot at it. Big time fingers crossed. Gonna go and uh, have a cookie. There's a little pier just over there on the other side of the bay. And every morning I've been going for a run to it. It's about 3K away. And this morning, because it is our last day in Egypt, Jen has asked me to wake her at 7 a.m. to come with me. So that'd be cool. Uh, we are certainly not doing any more underwater filming today because the GoPro gear is wrecked. Apart from the GoPro Max, which is working fine, but obviously doesn't work underwater. So that pretty much brings the Egypt stuff to an end. Next stop is to get back home on the iMac, have a play with the photo. It looked pretty good on the MacBook last night, but bed on the big screen, hopefully. And yeah, hopefully it looks pretty cool. What won't be cool is back to running in the cold again. Okay, back in the UK, and it is already very apparent that it is way too cold to be filming outside. The weather outside is frightful, but apart from going out for a run this morning with the dog, I've been indoors all day, so I don't care. Working on the pictures, and we got the photo that I wanted. That last session of the day with the GoPro literally falling apart as we were going, the dome literally filling up with water as we were going, it didn't matter. We got the photograph that I wanted, the one that I had in my head when I went out there, the one that I pictured getting. Just going through them now, I've edited lots of these out because again, a photograph every half second means there were thousands of them. And you can see straight away, as soon as Jen goes under for the first pass, she's in frame for every single half second shot. Completely nailed it. Took us four days of filming, but we got there in the end. Now, as we were working through these photographs at the time, we realized that this little rock formation that we were in front of was a bit messy. We went and tried it in front of a slightly shallower section. The trouble with the shallower section is that although you've got great footage of the beach here, the water that she's swimming in isn't very deep and it looks it. So it wasn't particularly impressive on that side. So we turned around and we saw this big rock pile coral pile in the distance it's dark here because the sun is on the other side but as soon as we got around in front of it where it was all lit up we realized that this was going to be the spot and on jen's very first pass she gets the photograph that i like the best this one right here the coral completely visible a little island all on its own effectively and then in the background the palm trees and the sky absolutely perfect i'll show you this in a minute with a bit of editing to it because it's got a bit of a bit of a green tinge to it again she swims in front she's in frame for every shot so there's a load to choose from if that hadn't worked and on her second pass going back in front of it there's another great shot that i like just here uh, I, i'm not a photographer but i like this kind of the rule of thirds thing that's going on here we've got jen in the first third the coral in the second third and the beach in the background in the third third really like it it looks like she's really powering through the water towards the coral and again in frame for every single shot let's jump across the lightroom there's that first one jen swing across from the left hand side the corals looking as vivid as they did in real life a lot more clarity and again jumping onto the next one my favorite this one this is the one that's going up on the wall this is the one that i've chucked up on instagram just love it now because we were shooting in relatively low resolution because that's the only option we had in the every half second time lapse mode we've had to do some noise reduction on the photographs and so they they aren't technically as great as they could have been 
but that doesn't matter. Could we have got a better photograph with better gear? Uh, well, yes, and not necessarily the gear that we didn't even own. There's the slight frustration. For example, I've got somewhere here, I've got a Hero 6, just to spare. We didn't take it though. I've even got a Rode mic for my iPhone 10, which would have given us far better audio than that rubbish that we got off of the GoPro Max that you could hear throughout the film. But again, that doesn't matter. Because we only had limited gear, it meant we spent longer doing it, which meant Jen got better at swimming, so we ended up with a better looking photograph in terms of how deep she was diving. It was more fun as well. It was just a fun experience to spend three or four days going after something together and coming away with that result. You could even argue that there's no need for me to go and get the GoPro 8 at all. Um, you could argue that, but it would be pointless because it's already here. I ordered this thing the second the plane touched down at Gatwick and it arrived this morning. There's no substitution for just a new gadget. That is it. Like, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. Uh, i got to go because I have a new toy to play with.